Everyone experiences some form of loneliness. In fact, I did kind of an impromptu questionnaire in my church over the last two weekends in both of our services and asked everyone who here has ever experienced or is currently experiencing loneliness. And about 85% of the congregation in every service raised their hands. And I just had everyone look around and realize you're not alone. Everyone experiences loneliness. But there's a risk in loneliness, and that is it driving you to isolation. Isolation is when we put ourselves in a bubble. We withdraw within ourselves. We cut ourselves off from people. We cut ourselves off from God. And unfortunately, in isolation, that's when we begin to believe the worst about ourselves. We begin to believe the worst about other people. We believe the worst about God. And we believe the worst about life in general. And you know that you do this or you have done this. But everybody has the tendency to dwell on what's going on wrong in their lives when they're by themselves. Now, it's a matter of how long are you going to do that? Are you going to sit in that and meditate on the problems, the, di the difficulties, the worry, the fear, to the degree that it begins to affect your heart, it begins to affect your emotions and how you feel? See, because that's what most people do. We all meditate, but what are you meditating on? Are you meditating on the circumstances or are you meditating on the truth? See, there's this process that we go through called rumination, which is like meditation, but you sit and you dwell on things that are being dictated to you, things that are happening to you, and it's a reactive type thinking rather than a intentional type thinking to refocus what you want to be feeling and what you want to be thinking on other information. Now, thankfully, we have the Word of God. In fact, I've got a post on my blog, forwardministries.org. It posted around April 15th, 2015. You can go and it's got an in Christ graphic. It's a list of very simple in Him scriptures. In fact, I've got two. One is very long and one is shorter. But it's repurposed to say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am whatever the passage is. I would encourage you to take some time, read through a list like that, when you feel isolated, when you feel like God's promises are difficult, when you feel like the world has beat you up, you've been driven to the corner, you're running those patterns of just negative, pessimistic thinking. See, because here's the danger. When we do that, when we allow our minds to run those patterns, all it does is serve to validate to our heart those negative beliefs that allow us to even think those patterns to begin with. So it's this cycle that starts through external stimulus or maybe even an internal emotional uh, occurrence or belief or whatever. It starts the process. We sit, we meditate on it, we feel it, we further validate. If we've isolated, then that becomes normal for us. We won't turn to the Word of God. We won't turn to other people. We won't open ourselves up to even the Spirit of God who is trying to speak to us from within us if we're believers, and we cut ourselves off from the life source that could help us get out of it. Interestingly enough, scientists have done some studies and show that it only takes about two minutes of an intentional focus to break the mental pattern and an emotional state to shift it to feeling and thinking about something else. So this means you're really only about two minutes away from changing your life. You're two minutes away from breaking out of that emotional stronghold that's holding you back from experiencing the victory that's available in God's Word to reaching a new place of emotional health in your life. So I encourage you, when it gets difficult, when those patterns become easy of sitting and dwelling on the negative things, take two minutes Focus on the Word of God intentionally to the degree that your emotions begin to shift. And what will happen is God's truth then becomes possible for you. God's truth then begins to shift your current reality. And your current reality realigns itself closer to God's truth. See, because what you're experiencing is real, but there's a greater reality. That is God's truth. I pray that you take those two minutes, stand on the Word of God, affirm to yourself that you are a child of God, that He loves you, that you are accepted in Him through Christ, all of the things that you know about your new identity through the finished work of Jesus Christ, and change 
the way you feel, ultimately changing your life.